Now, which TV gets the most use of any in the house? Well, this one right here in the kitchen. My wife and I watch this. The kids are always in here. In fact, this TV is in use almost all day long, and yet it's the least high-tech television we have and the smallest screen. Plus, it takes up a lot of valuable countertop space. Well, I'm going to change all that today. I'm going to upgrade this to a high-def set, and I'm going to solve the countertop clutter problem. Last year, my friend Sean Catrufo set up a home theater for me that the family and I have thoroughly enjoyed. This morning, he's coming back to give me a hand with the kitchen project. Thank you, bud. Did you have a good trip? Yeah, I did. How are you? Well, here's the culprit right mm -hmm. here. You know, really what I want, I want as big a screen as I can find, or what can fit in here. Um, the best quality picture, and I'd like to get the stuff up off the countertop, the cable box, the DVD player, all that kind of thing. Well, that's a great idea. The best bet right now would be to go with a 16 by 9 TV, a widescreen TV. We can fit it right up and underneath this cabinet. We can take the DVD player and the VCR and the cable box, fit them all inside the cabinet, right on the shelves. We can close it right back up, put a little sensor on the TV, and run the signal right up into the cabinet. So I don't have to then open the doors to use the uh, remote? No, nope, not I at all. Like that. The only thing though is we're going to have to start off with putting the cable wire and the electricity into the cabinet. Okay. Ray Hernandez has helped me out with a lot of electrical projects. I've asked him to run both electricity and cable inside the cabinet. First, he traces the junction box outlines. Then it uses a three quarter inch spade bit to drill starter holes for each box. Using a reciprocating saw, he makes the cutouts. Down in the basement, Ray feeds an electrical fish tape up into a hole he's drilled through the base plate at the bottom of the wall. Then he goes back upstairs to retrieve the end of the metal tape by reaching into the cutout. Now he tapes the electrical wire and television cable onto the opposite end of the fish tape. Notice how he twists the tape before breaking it? Then he feeds the wire bundle into the hole and pulls everything up into the kitchen. Now he feeds the cable through the back of the box and sets the box in place in the wall. Then he does the same thing with the electrical wire and box. As he turns screws on either side, small arms flip out inside the wall cavity. Continued turning draws the arms into contact with the back side of the wall, securing the box in place. Finally, he strips the insulation from the electrical wires, attaches them to the terminals on the receptacle, folds the wires carefully, pushes the outlet into the junction box, and secures the mounting screws. Now it's Sean's turn. He strips the insulation off the end of the coaxial cable, slips on a connector, and uses a crimping tool to attach the connector permanently to the end of the cable. Then he installs the cover plates on both boxes. While Sean and Ray have been doing the critical work, I've been out shopping.
The new high-def flat panel television set comes set up for tabletop use. First, Sean removes the handle on the back. Then unscrews and takes off the base that allows the set to be freestanding. Next, he removes the covers concealing the terminals. Then connects the new mounting bracket that will attach to the underside of the cabinet, using the same screw holes that were originally intended for the handle. Now he removes the bracket base, holds it in position, and marks the location of the mounting holes. The bracket will be attached using bolts rather than screws. Three holes are bored through the cabinet bottom. Threaded inserts are dropped in from the top. Then the bolts are inserted through the base and screwed up from the bottom where they engage the inserts. Next, Sean uses a hole saw to bore an opening that will allow cables to be run from the equipment in the cabinet to the TV below. First, he connects the cables to the DVD and cable box. Then, sets the equipment in place and feeds the lines through the hole, which needs to be large enough to accommodate not only the cables, but also the connectors on the ends. Now, what's going to allow me to operate the cable box and DVD player with the cabinet door closed is this remote sensor. It's being installed in the cabinet face frame and will communicate with any remote control device. Finally, the cables are connected to the TV. And the mounting bracket is secured to the base. The remote control units will send infrared signals to the receiver in the cabinet face. The receiver will pass those signals along to these tiny emitters that will in turn flash the infrared information to the cable box and DVD player. With all the hookups complete, the last of the wiring is tucked into this box, which serves as a base for the components. A removable cover conceals the wires, but leaves them accessible. Wow, I really like that. What do you think? Pretty good, huh? Very nice. And what's nice is we didn't take up any room in your cabinet. You got your cable box, your DVD player, and a little box that hides all the wiring. You just slide this panel over, you can access all the wiring for any repairs or upgrades. Slide it back, close it up, disappears. And this sensor right here brings all of the signals back up into the cabinet so you don't have to have the doors open. Wow. Turn the TV this way while you're washing your dishes, turn it back the other way, and you can watch it at your table. Beautiful. And you know what? We cleared up all of this counter space. Like a good many families, we spend a lot of time in our kitchen. Now we've got a TV that's versatile enough to allow us to catch the news while we're preparing a meal or share a movie over a bowl of popcorn. <laughs> well, so much for the sharing part. <laughs>